All right, I'm going to talk to you guys about the journey I've been through, uh, learning about auto upholstery, and the things I found out about machines that you might want to know before you start looking. So, uh, one of the things I found out is, um, you know, you need a walking foot sewing machine to do any kind of, uh, you know, first of all, everybody go, you go to the, you go to the post supply or someplace and they say, say, what kind of machine do I, well, you need a commercial sewing machine. Well, that's true. You need a commercial walking foot sewing machine, which would be more of a real, what you say, you know, you need, and then there's two different kinds of walking foot machines which there's a walking presser foot machine and then there's actual a real walking foot machine and what a lot of people sell including uh some of the places online that have the uh you know you'll find them on eBay and and Sellrite sells one um and it's basically they say it's a walking foot machine they say but it's really a walking presser foot so I'm going to show you what that is this is a walking presser foot machine. It's kind of the the basic necessary machine to do sewing auto upholstery. But uh, this is you're gonna replace this machine. You're gonna after a little while, it's gonna be like oh, this is a pain in the neck. And it's much easier to have a real walking foot machine. So honestly, I'm gonna tell you that yeah, you probably should just step up and get the walking foot machine right in the beginning. So. Let me show you how this works. What it does is you see the foot. The presser foot moves back and forth with the feed dogs, okay? It lifts up and moves back. You can see it lifting up and it shoots back and then it lifts up and then it goes back with the feed dog. Okay, that is a mechanical pressing foot machine, a walking foot machine. It is, it is not really a walking foot. If you go to like some sort of a place where there nobody speaks English sewing, you know, inside, a lot of them will call this a dragging foot machine. So, you know, it's like my sewing guy, he, English is like a second language for him. So he's really good speaking, speaking English, but he's a really super good guy, Sergio. And he says, no, that's a dragging foot machine. So anyway, but you'll see him online all over the place saying it's walking foot. And especially on the tabletop units, um, you're going to see that a lot. And what what a, what an actual walking foot machine is the foot, it, the presser foot, which is this little thing in the middle right here, part of it, will actually just go up and down. It won't walk. It's weird because I guess maybe the first ones were walking presser foot, and that was called walking foot. But the the other ones. They just go up and down and it holds the material and the needle goes up and then down through the material and moves back. So the needle does an oscillation like this. I'm doing it very extra big so you can see what you're looking at if you look at them online. That's a true walking foot machine. And the reason they work better is because the needle, when it pushes through the material, it will pull it back. You could almost let go of the material and it just sucks it right into it because the, when the needle is poking through it, it pulls, okay? And you're not going to stop that material from going, okay? With this, you can grab it if you really want to. You could probably grab it and hold it and keep it in place. So what happens is sometimes with these types of machines, you know, the top will pull at a different rate than the bottom and then you start to get that you know the material starts to kind of walk on itself like this so then you end up with these weird wrinkles and you know it's just harder to work with so it's easier to have the walking foot machine straight out from the get-go um but there's a lot of things to even know about that so we're going to talk about that kind of machine we're also going to talk about real quick about those desk test desktop units um that they sell on ebay um and Sailrite sells one too, and you know, I'm not going to say anything bad about them. It's just that you know, it's it's an expensive way to go for me, um, because they have do when they have it, they do have stuff, okay, which is cool that they do have it, um, but it is kind of expensive. Like this rig right here from them was I bought this for like 15 bucks. From them, it's like 90. <laughs> I was like, whoa, you know, 
it was like between fifty and ninety dollars. I don't remember exactly how much it was, but I remember seeing it one place where it was ninety ninety four dollars, and one place where it was fifty. I don't know if it was for the same machine, probably for different ones. But they do have it, and it's just a bolt-on right to their machine, which is kind of nice. But you're also very limited with one of those machines, which I'm going to talk to you about right now. Um, uh, first of all, I'm going to tell you, I'm no expert. I'm just learning this as I go. But I look online, and I find nothing on this. On YouTube, nothing. No information on sewing machines. All I see is a guy... You know, sewing, you can't speak English, so he doesn't say anything. People go, well, why aren't you talking? And he goes, well, it's like, dude, don't you realize there's people from all over the world on YouTube? Hmm, okay, figure that out. So, um, so anyway, this, this one here, uh, this machine will actually take a 23-gauge needle, which one of the things we're going to talk about is needles and thread sizes. Um, and you need at least a 20 gauge needle to do auto upholstery. And the thread, is the, and that's, the, that's only one type of auto upholstery, not all types. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. But this is called V92 thread. Okay. V92 thread is basically the industry standard. Sunbrella makes it really good stuff. Um, it is basically the industry standard for most regular sewing. Now, when you have things like flat stitching and stuff like that, where the stitching is actually showing on the outside, some of the people are using up to 277 thread, which this machine will not do. I think you need like a 27 uh, needle. Don't quote me on it, but I think that's what you need for that. You can look up those things online. I'm just telling you this stuff so you can look it up, so you can figure out what you need versus trying to just willy-nilly figure this out because there really is no information on it so like i said uh, the 23 you can do 207 thread which is another one of those threads that you can see the thread on top of the material which is kind of like you know when you're doing wallets and stuff like that so some of those like i said those desktop units a lot of them only take a 20 gauge needle something to look into when you're going to buy one if you're considering that option one of the other problems with the desktop unit is you don't have the table to work with. And when you have the machine set up, it's a little higher than the rest of the table. And when you're working with things like uh, uh, auto upholstery where you have, fa you know, not just fabric, but you have vinyl and you have things like welt you're working with, it's really nice to have that at the same level and have a lot bigger table, which I kind of got a mess going on here because I'm working on the machine right now, which is another wonderful part of this in fact i wish i would have just bought the walking foot machine in the beginning because um i really think that's where I, what i want but you know this dragging foot is kind of the minimum standard and you know i didn't really know what i'm explaining to you now so hoping maybe i can teach some of you guys to learn before you know you make the plunge like i did because i just got to the point where i went to the upholstery guy and he goes 1200 bucks to sew up your seats and i'm like how long is it going to take you to do that? Everything's patterned. Everything's made. Everything's like this, all ready to go. And you just need to sell them up and you're going to charge you 1200 bucks. So basically, you're going to make $1,200 in a day. Wow. I think I need to get a machine. So, and I've done, I've done it before. I've done a couple seats many years ago um, when I was younger and eat more eager. And then uh, just decided to get the get a real machine to do it. And this wasn't really quite the real machine the real machine is the walking foot keep that in mind some of the other things you're going to need to do auto upholstery um, is you will need not only that you will need a welting foot where if you look here and what a welting foot is what a welting foot is is a is a presser foot with a arched groove for welt to hold a, you know to hold the welt in place so that when you put your material underneath here and you have your welt, you weld, sew your welt to one side of the material first, and then you sew through the welt and the other side of the material. Just makes it a whole lot easier instead of trying to go all through layer, all three layers at once, which is like impossible. Um, if you're wondering why that wasn't working, maybe that's what it was. So anyway, it's because of the equipment you have. You got to have the right equipment to do this, and so you need a welting foot. Now. 
the trick is there's a million different name brands and machines. There's a million different options when it comes to like distance here. You know, there's, uh, there, there's machines, double needle. There's all kinds of, when it comes to commercial sewing machines. And that's the thing I'm telling you, people go, oh, just go get a commercial sewing machine. Well, there's like, which one, you know, which one will do the attachments that I have. And I'm going to kind of explain to you that the best way to do this is kind of what you probably are reluctant to do, which is what I probably should have done in the beginning is just go to the sewing guy. I've got to go to, go to Sergio and say, listen, here's what I want to do. I want to do auto upholstery. What machine do you have? And you go, Oh, you have this one for 1500 and this one for two grand, you know, and that's, you know, what I would be spending. And you might say, Oh my God, you know, I've seen ones on Craigslist for 800 bucks, but, but by the time you buy all the attachments you need and you buy the welting foot and you take it to Sergio after you bought it because it runs too fast and you got to get the thing geared down, you get all the crap you need on it, you're going to have the 1500 bucks in it. So you might as well just go spend it the first time. So that's my point really of the video is find a good, honest sewing repair guy that you can go to maybe buy a used machine because... There's a lot, and, and then you still should be aware of everything you're going to need for that machine to work for what you want it to do. So you need a welting foot. If you're going to put welt on, you got to have one of these. And you have to have a machine that they still make welting foots for, or they make one for, which this machine uh, is one of the early Singer copies, which this is a Rex. You know, there's a Met Rex, Mitsubishi, Singer makes one, I mean... There's a whole bunch of different ones that make this the same type of a foot system. And almost all of them are basically the same machine. But they're just manufactured in different places, look a little slightly different, but they operate and are exactly the same. Um, so, a lot of times you're going to find that you can't get that presser foot for welting. I actually had to make one for this machine. What a pain in the ass. I had to make my own welting foot. I had to use a different foot and, and weld two pieces together to make the right distance and all this other garbage just to make a welting foot and it kind of works and then you have to adjust your thread tension and all that and everything has to be just right sometimes you have to raise the foot up when you're going through the thicker material or it'll start dragging because it's not a walking foot machine if it was a walking foot machine it wouldn't give a rip it just go right through it so um the other things you're going to need are um one of the attachments for your sewing machine um, this is for doing carpet binding. You know, you put this on the edge of your carpet like this, fold this guy over and sew through two layers. I mean, how is that going to work without this thing? This thing, you feed it through here, it goes through, you just shove your carpet in and you can sew it almost as fast as you can push it through. And it sews it perfectly. Everything's lined up. Everything's the same. And it just just does it there's no no issues so uh but just keep that in mind i got a one inch um you were definitely going to need an inch and a quarter or maybe bigger um one of these so now i'm looking at well oh, shoot all this work i've done to make this thing work and uh, it's not going to even work on this machine so bummer or uh, what I'll do is I'll probably just trim, trim a quarter inch off of this and just go with it. So I can probably do that easier than I would trying to replace this. So anyway, uh, and these things bolt onto your machine right here. And, you know, listen here, we'll bolt on right here. And that just holds in place while you do that. So that's, those are called attachments. Um, they have them on Amazon for quite a bit less money than Cellrite. Like I said, I mean, I'm not saying anything bad about Cellrite. It just, it sometimes it can be a pricier way to go for some items. They do have some cool stuff there. Um, I'm not encouraging you not to go there. I'm saying that um, they do have some cool stuff. Okay, so I've talked about a walking foot machine and I've talked about you need to have one that the attachments, you can get them for it. So if you buy one on Craigslist and you might say, wow, I got a really good deal. I got this thing for 500 bucks. I'm going to go take it over to my selling guy. He takes it over and he goes, oh, uh, hmm. Well, I have to make a walking. I have to make a uh, welting foot for that. And that's going to cost you 
200 bucks. And you're like, oh, man, I just saved, you know, and I just spent some of that money back. Oh, oh, by the way, um, this does not have a servo motor. Oh, well, and those are another $120 installed or whatever, whatever. I don't know, 200 bucks installed probably. It's still, you know, for him to do it, unless you know how to do that yourself. And then, uh, you know, I'm going to need to gear this thing down because you got too large of a gear, okay? Because you want to go slow. Automotive upholstery, it's not about speed. It's about slow, methodical, and getting it through the machine very accurately. That's the key thing, and that's what these machines don't normally do. You have to really gear them down. So if you buy one of those ones, those little desktop units, from eBay and you think, man, this is the way to go. Um, you're probably going to have to gear, redo the gearbox in it. Um, there's a, they have a motor on them right here. And there is a, a slow gear set for that. I mean, it's, it's kind of a, I forget what the deal was and how to do it. But by the time you end up doing that and you're doing the other things, you'll end up spending what you would have spent on a, regular sewing table machine you know unless you're trying to save space and saving space sometimes is not always the best way to go especially if you're going to really kind of do a lot of it. it it's better just to get the big table get the walking foot machine you know and then you know get the proper attachments put on it and just do your job um so I'm just showing you a few different things here, to, things to look for. Another thing that you don't get with the desktop is this machine's, I, I have been lifting it up and back. If I lift it up, this thing comes down. And what this does is the same thing that this arm does right here. Okay, by leaning on that. So you don't have to, so when you're going through and you're doing, you get to the end, you wanna lift it up and turn. Uh, it's kind of a pain when you got all you're holding it down you have to reach over with your other hand and maybe you need to wind this at the same time and you're going ah so you have to lift this up to turn it so it's much easier to have one that you do with your leg not available on a desktop machine so some of those portable ones think about some of that stuff once you start using it for a little while you're gonna go man this is a drag you know it doesn't do all the stuff that the other ones do so, um, you're trying to make sure I got everything in here. Uh, the needle size, again, you need to make sure it's got a big enough needle size for the job you're trying to do. V92 takes a, takes a, a 20 thousandths minimum. The, uh, I, this one will do 207, which is a 23,000, number 23, I think it is. I don't know. It's 23 thousandths, but it's a 23 gauge needle. And then a, I think a 27 gauge is 277. So if you get a big enough machine that does the 277 thread, then you're done. You've got everything the first time. You don't have to go back and buy another one in a couple more years and all that other stuff that you're going to end up doing. Because you're going to get something, you're going to go, oh man, I can't even sew this. Darn. And then you're going to be back to the drawing board trying to buy what you could have bought the first time. So, um... So you remember the desktop thing. I mean, if you really need the space, you know, they're, they're not so bad. Um, but you are limited on your thread size. Um, you're going to need to gear it down. You can't lift it up with this thing because it doesn't have one. Um, you, you're, you're more narrow. So it's like the machine's about this wide instead of this wide. So sometimes you have to sew and put a, I don't even roll up what you've got and shove it through this way. You know, normally you'll try and keep it to sew the other direction, but every once in a while you'll have to sew it through this way. And when it's only this is this wide, it's really hard to throw, you know, to do some big old automotive seat through that thing or a, or a boat seat, you know, or something like that shoving it through there or like when you're pleating you know you're pleating your there's going to be a point when you're, you're going to have a big section on this side you know there's no way around it maybe you'll flip it over and do half of it and 
then you get to a point where it's way over here and you're rolling it up and you're kind of keeping it here and you're just doing the pleats and then and then you get to the middle and then you flip it over and you go the other way right but you still have a point when you need a lot of material on this side so you know those desktop ones they you know they're good kind of but there's you're very limited on what you can do with that machine so those are the just the types of things I, I just seen so much i got steered the wrong way myself and you know um and and i'm just trying to you know if that if you're really seriously trying to do automotive upholstery really the best bet really is just to go to your sewing guy and say listen you know i want one that has a welting foot and i want one that has you know one of these guys here an attachment for doing this i need it to do at least inch and a quarter maybe even they go to an inch and a half um and uh i needed to do all that stuff and i needed to run up to 277 thread and just get the machine and it, you know he's gonna go oh well oh, those are like 1500 bucks or and you're gonna go and i looked on craigslist and they're only like seven or eight hundred you're gonna just spend the 800 bucks anyway you know you're gonna spend the other by the time you go back and forth to him you're gonna spend a week of your life just go to him and you know i don't fix these things i'm not trying to self for those guys i'm just saying that listen you know there's a lot to know there's a lot to know on this there's no way to just mean to throw it all in one video and i would highly suggest that start that way and if you just can't afford to do that then go the other way but at least you'll know what you're getting into and then say you know you say hey listen i can't afford that but you know if i bring them uh, my head to you can you put you know, I, I'm looking at this machine. Can I put this, uh, you know, can you put these attachments on it for me? And then find out how much it's going to cost you. Maybe it'll be a few hundred bucks cheaper. But at least you'll know in ahead of time what you're looking at before you start. Instead of just trying to figure it out and then go to the sewing guy later and figure out that it's just going to cost you 1500 bucks. It would have cost you $1,500 either way. All right. Talk to you in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe.